So, I'm using a kit lens with in-body stabilization and optical image stabilization turned on. So this should look pretty smooth. Continuous focus tracking test, and if you can't tell, it's so cold that <laughs> it hurts my face just being outside. <laughs> it's awesome living in a place that's warmer in my refrigerator than it is outside. <laughs> my face is numb. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> So just a quick note to the non-Fujifilm users out there watching this. I don't think you caught it, but the last curation of shots were all of garbage cans. Now that is something me, as I identify as a Fujifilm owner now that I have this, we like to take pictures, only film simulation modes of garbage. Now, I don't mean to call little Timmy a heap of trash because if you're using this for your portrait photography, he looks nice in his polo. I don't know the kid. But back to the camera, the X-S10 is a capable little performer. Now I say little because that's kind of where this fits in. It's a mid-range camera, 26 megapixels, and a crop sensor. The reason I got this was because I missed my G85, which is uh, somewhat an older competitor of this little mirrorless here. I was hung up between getting the G85 and the XS10, but ultimately I decided to go with Fujifilm because I like their color science a bit more than Panasonic's. And being that this has in-body stabilization and such a small form factor, I feel like it'd be a great travel camera while I can still get some professional grade results. And man, it does perform well. Now, if we look at the body here, it's not like you'd see on a lot of their other cameras, or it's a retro rangefinder build. It looks more or less like you'd see with all of other mid-range mirrorlesses on the market today, but it does have some of that hybrid, old school, new school, mutt mirrorless look here with its retro grade stippling and somewhat frothy grip for its size. I really enjoy all the custom keys you get with the XS10 and the fact that they have three spinny dials. While they didn't include their usual shutter speed and aperture dials, I do enjoy the layout. I have mine set up so I get all the nice film simulations on the left as a quick draw. It does have a fully articulated screen so it hits that vlogging mid-range market very, very well. So ergonomics to me are great. I think this would be awesome paired with the Pancake Prime lens, that way you can pocket it. But for me, I just like using the kit lens with this camera. Another notable upgrade that the Fujifilm X-S10 has is a normal mic jack. And that was a massive deal for me because I had the X-A5 and that had this puny little weird anti-innovative mic input that I just had to adapt my normal stuff with. So this is a nice needed change. 
Initially, I was a bit worried about the Ibis because it is a smaller body. I didn't see it having a whole lot of room to move around, but that is no issue in this camera, especially if you use it with an image stabilized lens, then the two work in tandem nicely. Now, if we go to specs for the hybrid shooters out there, video mode is what you'd expect to see. You have 4K with the color readout of 420 8-bit and the usual upgrades if you get an external recorder. You do have F-Log and the film simulations look great even in video mode. And the IBIS is a great addition to the X-S10, not just for video, but for photography as well. And on the photography side, you have that 26 megapixel sensor to work with, so you have plenty of detail for your prints. You have full bracketing options, and without getting too sciencey, I think this is a great camera for street photography in particular because it's small and the IBIS works great if you want to hand hold your shots. You don't have to worry about shake so much. So as you saw, I'm in the cold, brutal Midwest of the United States. So we get some brutish winters up here and I really rely on durable weather seal bodies and that's what the XS10 is. Granted, all batteries succumb to cold weather this one lasted strong for the few hours I was out. And being that this is small, I don't have to worry about lugging it around in the cold for a very long time and getting tired of carrying my gear. Another thing that I want to mention, yeah, this is touchscreen, but I set it up to where I don't have the touch modes at all. In fact, the joystick here works very well to navigate all of my menus. And being that there's so many custom dials, I don't have to hunt and the reason I want to mention that is because it gets very cold up here and usually touch screens just don't work in my thick gloves. So what I'm trying to say is that the button layout, the custom keys, the joystick and the menus all work flawlessly when the weather is out trying to kill me and I don't have time to take off my gloves just to change my aperture. So to wrap up, I really enjoy the X-S10. I think it is a fantastic choice, not just for your mid-range prosumers, but for the professional shooters as well, hybrids out there, or people that just want a small loadout that they don't have to worry about so much. This is a good camera. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to Matt Snelt's Instagram. I'll be posting animations to TikTok again, etc., etc. Fight my comments and I will see you later.